when I look at graves and what, what they're doing, I sense very strongly and empathically that they naturally need love. I don't mean a kind of woolly love that lets them do whatever they want to do, but a love that accepts their reality, that accepts their condition, and all of the others that, that, that are um, making their presence known here. Um, but in a way that if we don't learn to overcome our fear, we are incapable of love, and if we are incapable of love, then we can't resolve the problems that might arise out of a relationship, whether it's with non-human intelligences or whether it's with us, each other, ourselves. Between the age of 16 and 19, I felt like I was being left alone, being given time to integrate the experiences that I'd had um, over the previous years and to choose whether I wanted to carry on with this. Now, I've said that second stage contact involves, uh, or it, it depends on how you respond to, to first stage contact, initiation. Um, the third stage is once you have overcome your fear, and the second stage can take years to go through, um, or not. But the third stage involves having close interaction with ETs, actually starting to work with them. Um, possible one-to-one -one interaction in physical form, going on board, um, and starting to treat them as equals, or different equals. Okay, they come from a different place, different experience. Uh, something the, the ET that I encountered um, never did was he never told me his name. He never told me where he came from or any details about his planet. And as a growing up child, I, I didn't even question this. I just thought it was, it was okay. Um, it wasn't the most important thing. The most important thing was knowing that he was real and, um, and trying to understand why um, he was here and why I was experiencing this. Now, when I was nine, he asked me, do you remember? and I had a whole flood of mental images. Well, I met him again when I was 14. This time I was out of my body, and it was an onboard experience. And I remember for quite a few years asking if I could come on board, and I never got a reply, but intuitively I felt, no, you're not ready. Um, but one day I received this instruction saying it would be possible. And during the day, I was very excited, and the day went on and on and on, and still nothing was happening. And um, by night time, as I was getting into bed, I was beginning to feel really disappointed. Um, but just as I fell asleep, I had another out-of-body experience, and found myself, I walked to the bedroom window and looked out, and there was this object hovering. Now, a lot of people have said, are you sure you weren't dreaming? Well. I had a lot of parapsychological experiences throughout my life, started at a very early age, and by the time this experience came along, I was already reading books on the subject and wanting to understand the mind and the various um, phenomena that the mind experiences. So I looked into hallucinations and thought forms, um, wishful thinking, dreaming, different things, and. This wasn't that. I was out of my body and it really does feel different. If any of you have had an out of body experience, you will know that being out of your body uh, is nothing like um, dreaming or um, just wish, um, imagining it. Um, I walked to the window and I looked up and there was this object. And a second later, uh, a beam of light hit me and I found myself going up in this beam of light and passed through the wall of this craft, which felt um, strange. It was like almost passing through water um, with like a tingling sensation all, all over me. And I found myself in a circular room um, with light that seemed to be coming from everywhere. And this being that I knew was standing to my right and look, looking away from me and had something covering his uh, face and body. And I said to him, why are you looking away from me? And he said, because you'll be frightened. And I said, I don't think so. So he then turned and I had a really good profile of this thing 
which kind of looked different from when I first saw him because he was in his body. Um, he wasn't actually projecting. And I could see the wrinkles um, in and around the eyes. And I wasn't frightened. And he then, without speaking, walked in front of me and I followed. And I remember passing a, a kind of control panel on the right, but I didn't look at it. I just um, was aware of it. And he led me out of this circular room down into a corridor. And down in this corridor on the left-hand side, as I entered it, was like um, a bed that was inset in the wall down on the floor. And he pointed down to it and said, do you remember? And as soon as I heard those words, once again, I had a whole flood of mental images that I knew to be related to my life. Um, now, this is the first time I've actually said this on the film, but, um, and I ask no one here, um, I, don't, I don't ask any of my audiences to believe in anything um, that I say, at best to keep an open mind, at most if you're interested, to inquire and um, to question, and as you do that, perhaps you will find that some of the things in the hall that I'm saying is true. Um, but when he said to me, do you remember, some of the images I got was um, not on this planet. And I know inside myself, although I cannot prove it, um, that there were images there relating to past life, and past life in another form. Um, and after having many out-of-body experiences before, I was already initiated to, I felt initiated to the reality that we are more than physical beings, we have souls, and the energy of our consciousness survives physical death, and that we go through many lives because we need to. Um, our body has needs, but our soul has needs too, and our mind has needs. And so, after seeing some of this imagery, which some of it was quite disturbing for me at the time, and this is why I think I have missing time. Um, not because I was taken against my free will, not because I went through any kind of medical examinations, um, but because the nature of the information that I was experiencing as a child and teenager was emotionally very provocative. And I always felt also with the experience that I'll remember when I need to know. And um, what has happened throughout my life is that different things in my environment will trigger off memory. And one of the memories that was triggered um, a few years ago while I was walking through a, a town in, in Wiltshire just shopping, and I don't actually remember what it was that triggered it, but suddenly took me right back to uh, some of those images, and particularly an image of laying on this bed and dying as a being. And my soul, myself coming out of my body and standing next to this being that I knew. Um, make of it what you will. 